walking cane self-defense or how to use a walking cane for self-defense. Five basic, basic techniques. I want you to be able to pick up a basic walking cane, or in this case, this is a Cane Masters Oak self-defense cane. This is a dojo training cane. I also have, that I like to train with this. This is my everyday carry cane. This is the one to keep with me in the car. This is a much nicer cane. It has a finish on it. It has this teardrop design, which is really a blade. It's a doll blade, but it's very effective. It'll crush bone, it'll break bone. It'll open the flesh for self-defense. It's very effective. It also has this crook or this hook. We're gonna talk about that. That's gonna be one of the five moves. But we're gonna talk about five moves for self-defense everyone should know using your walking cane for self-defense. But I want you first to warm up with me. When you have your cane, you're gonna put the long side coming out of your thumb and you're gonna crank it forward nice and easy. I just oiled this up today. I oil them mine about every week, this one, especially because I use it so much and it gets dried out, but when you keep the oil on it, it stays longer or stays uh, healthier longer. So more flexible, stronger, all of that. The long side comes out of your thumb. You're gonna crank forward in this little turning motion. You get it going and you're gonna do this for about 30 seconds. Now what this is gonna do is build callus on your hands. When we get into these five moves for self-defense that everyone should know using your walking cane for self-defense, these five moves are going to require that you're constantly sliding the cane from one position to another position to get in that position for effective self-defense. We get that callus on the hands. You can see that with this basic spinning, this also engages your core, either standing or sitting doesn't matter. You can do it both ways, just spinning to the outside You can go slower at first. This oak cane master's cane is kind of heavy so it gives me a really good workout too then you're going to bring it across your body and back across and back this is also disguising repetition one of the moves is going to be a basic slashing striking motion and when you do that basic striking motion you're practicing this motion here you're practicing that same motion you're disguising repetition by doing it in your warm-up spin now warming up slapping across the face, backhand, think of it in that motion, but warming up is also going to get the blood flowing into the joints, staying safe from injury during your workout. So after you've done this warm up with one hand, put it in the other hand, start again with that simple forward cranking motion. The long side comes out of the thumb, your palm is facing the sky, your hand is closed, but not too tight. Let's see. Silent ambassadors say, glad I made it. Silent ambassadors, glad you're here. You're bringing it around and around and around. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Do this for 30 seconds at a time, and then you're gonna go across your body and back. As we talk about the five moves everybody should know for self-defense, using your walking cane for self-defense, I'm gonna do a proper warm-up. I want you to do this with me and see this as a workout. So if you're new to cane martial arts or cane self-defense, this is a good place to start. It's so coming over and back, over and back, 30 seconds, and now you've properly warmed up both sides of your body. We're going to get into the first of the five moves for self-defense. Everyone should know using walking cane self-defense, and that's going to be from this position, having your hand on it here. Uh, Dean Charles says, I watch a couple times a week. Thank you, Dean. I'm glad to train with you. I'm happy to be able to train with you. Palm facing down. You're going to hold it just like you would normally a walking stick or your uh, walking cane. This is just a standard design, right? It's a simple, basic design. This one happens to be a Cane Masters cane. It's a dojo training cane. The link's below if you want to see what they cost. or They're not expensive at all. But the idea is any cane will work, right? So you're walking down the street, minding your business. You're paying attention to what's happening around you. The threat's coming up, you get into a better position first. So from here, it just comes up and it slides into your hand a little bit, which is again, why I want you to warm up like this. That's gonna make it easier for it to slide in your hand. Now between you and the threat, you're gonna put your cane. Good evening, Naj. Naj says, good evening. The cane is gonna interrupt their line of sight. This is just a better position. This long piece of oak goes between me and the threat. We're gonna call this bag right here the threat. He might have a knife, he might have a club, he might have a skateboard. I don't know if he has a weapon or not. 
he might intend to do me harm. He might be one of multiple attackers. So I'm going to immediately address the threat by sticking the cane between me and the threat. Now, the first technique, the first move that I want you to learn for self-defense, when you're learning five self-defense moves, everyone should know using your walking cane for self-defense. Think of a thrust. Number one is going to be a thrust. I put the cane between me and the threat, and I'm just going to go straight in to his face for self-defense. Now, this oak piece of wood, this long, hard, well-oiled, super flexible, a little heavy, strong, sturdy piece of wood is going to smash right into the nose or into the eyes or take out the teeth, go into the throat, go into the solar plexus, but I'm going center line. So your first technique, when you're learning five moves for self-defense, everyone should know using a walking cane for self-defense, you put the cane between you and the threat, stick it straight in. That's all you have to do. That's number one. Now, if you need to, you can support and be even stronger, but when you're going to the face, it doesn't really have to be a very hard strike because you're gonna let the wood do the work. It's between you and the threat, your body weight is behind it, and you're going right into the face. Now, this is true of all animals. Your eyes, your nose, your teeth, you can't make those strong by lifting weights or doing push-ups or doing some kind of exercise, throwing medicine balls at it like you do a boxer's stomach. When that comes in and smashes the nose, Danelle, Danelle Stewart says uh, she had to defend her friend with a pull stick. Yeah, um, I was gonna say we've all been there, but no, we haven't all been there, but we've, some of us have used sticks and they're very effective for self-defense. Let the stick do the work. Put the stick in the face. That's the first move for self-defense. So from here, in this position, you get into a better position and thrust, either stepping forward or stepping back. I want you to practice this. This is a follow-along self-defense class. In this follow-along self-defense class, as you're working on these five moves, everyone should know for self-defense, number one being a thrust, practice thrusting. Now, if you have something to hit, hit it. If you don't, don't hit it. Just go in the air in the air. From here, thrust. The thrust just means straighten the arm, straighten the arm, straighten the arm. If you want to, lean into it. Kind of lean, lean, kind of like you're fencing. But just go straight in. The, maybe you have to go backward because they're coming in so fast, or maybe you see that knife. You're immediately going for the face. That's the first of the five moves. Self-defense. Everyone should know using your walking cane for self-defense, the second move is going to be a strike right down on top. And what I want you to do, this is how I like to train in person. If you are here working with me now, I would have you weave these moves together, practice these moves in combination. So I'm gonna have you start here, do your thrust first, and then bring it straight to your shoulder. Now, when I do this, notice that my wrist is doing the work. I want you to make your wrist do the work. That means, don't lift your arm high over your head. If you're here and you lift your high arm high over your head and the ceiling is low, I'm almost touching the ceiling here, you're gonna run into the ceiling. If your arm is here and you're bringing it down on top and they close that distance instinctively or they know what they're doing, your arm's gonna hit them here on top and it's gonna wrap around their back and it's not gonna be an effective self-defense move. Chief of Beef, thank you for that uh, $9.99 donation. It really helps keep this thing going. I was saying today earlier in one of these live streams, Cheap of Beef, that I was thinking about taking some of your financial support, all of you who've joined here. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe already and uh, share this and, and do all that good stuff. Think, consider joining. We're going to grow this virtual dojo as we grow it. I'm going to get some more camera guys. I'm going to get some people to help me do guys and girls, whoever it is. I don't care. Somebody who can do a little editing, somebody who can get these out a little bit faster and get me organized so I'm not just yakking at the whole time, right? Number one, I'm thrusting. Number two, you're gonna add from your shoulder just straight down right through the middle. And your goal is to hit him here for self-defense. Ideally, you're gonna knock him out for self-defense. It might bounce off. You might have to do it a couple times for self-defense, but the goal is straightforward one, straight down two. And the reason that I have you defending yourself by going in to the face and down on the head is that's the most disruptive. If you have a punk thug criminal, somebody who's used to hurting people who seem weaker than they are, somebody who's taken advantage of 
of the fear that they might be creating in somebody and they, they're used to seeing someone back up. All of a sudden, you stick that stick in their face and you tell them verbally, loud command, I will defend myself. You're not attacking anybody. You're not the aggressor. They're the aggressor and it's your right to defend yourself. And you say, I will defend myself. Hello, Brandon. It's good to see you tonight too. Brandon says, good to see you. So from here, thrust, interrupt their pattern, go right in. See how that just immediately takes away the sight picture they have of me. They've got to look around to see me anyway. Even if I don't hit them, it's going to move them back. Then from your shoulder, straight down on top. And again, you get to your shoulder from here, just simply bending and then down, straight down on top. After that, the third of the five moves self-defense everyone needs to know using a walking cane for self-defense. After your thrust, remember we're building these in combination, thrust to the face, straight down on top, bring it to the other shoulder, and come straight across the middle. Now you're gonna do this horizontal strike. Hello, Pink Ice, it's good to see you. Pink Ice says hello. You're gonna come straight to your shoulder, down on top, to your other shoulder, and straight across. Now your goal here, some with jaw maybe, eyes, temple, neck, maybe you hit that neck and that puts them out, uh, hits that uh, complex of nerves, flushes the brain, uh, the blood, they drop like a sack of potatoes, right? Like a sack of rocks. For self-defense, this is all self-defense. You're not the aggressor, they're attacking you. You're saying, I have every right to defend myself. Back up, you're too close. One, to the shoulder, two, to the other shoulder, and then three, straight across. It comes to the shoulder, again, for the same reason I brought it to the other shoulder. If you go up, you can run into the ceiling, run into the tree, maybe you're sitting on the bus, maybe you're in a chair, and it's in your, or you're on the plane, or, and it runs into the ceiling, and you lose your cane or you can't use it. Or it's up here, they, again, they close that distance, and you're just pinned, you're pinned with your own arm. If it comes here, it, you're not pinned at all. You're coming through that motion right here, straight through. So we're into three. That's three of the five moves of self-defense. Everyone needs to know using your walking cane for self-defense. But let's review them because I like to do them in combination. Get into a better position. Put the cane between you and the other person. Thrust to the shoulder, straight down on their forehead to the other neck or to your other shoulder, and you're gonna come through their temple or through that jaw, through that neck. Maybe it's that, that arm. Maybe they're reaching and you're gonna hit that uh, joint. You're gonna hit the wrist joint. You can hit the, all those fingers, bony fingers on the outside with this hard piece of oak. This Cane Masters oak self-defense cane or carrying this one. This is my everyday carry cane. It's got this five, five or five, 50 cord, the paracord for uh, just to keep it, you know, all my sweaty, oily hand from losing the grip. If I need to, throw my wrist in there, have a v and I'm not losing it now. I've got this tooth for self-defense. Remember, I told you we're going to use that here on, in these top five, but I have this bar. See that? It's almost like a dull blade. Now, you thrust. It's a very strong grip through the face, straight down through the forehead for self-defense, and whatever you hit with that is going to shatter it. That is hard, hard oak. And that smaller edge, see how it's a teardrop? I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Here, let me just pull that off. There you go. If you want to see what these cost, they're in the link below. This one's a little bit more expensive. This is a great beginner option. I always say if you can get both, carry one every day. Keep it nice and pretty. It's super fancy and extremely lethal for self-defense. And then carry the other one. Uh, use the other one to train with. Use the other one when you want to go walking in the, in the park or go in the woods or whatever, and you don't mind getting it a little dirty and you want to practice outside. But if you have this cane and you do these techniques, it's going to be more effective than if you have this cane. This is the dojo training cane. This is going to build the strength in your hand. This one is very effective for self-defense. Now, we talked about the first three and we're holding the cane in the right position that most people would carry. The last two, when we talk about five moves for self-defense, everybody should know using a walking cane for self-defense, I want you to turn the hook around facing the opposite direction. 
And the third one, I'm gonna change the camera angle a little bit, move it back. This is one of my favorites because it's just so effective. So from here, I'm gonna have this here facing out. And we're gonna say this is still the thread, right? Still those same thrusting motions, but you know how to thrust now, you know how to come down on top, you know how to come to the side, but I'm gonna this time, starting in this position, which is ergonomically stronger, I can stand like this, you can see it, I can stand like this, you can see it, but I'm gonna take this, and my wrist is gonna snap straight up, snap straight up, and when I snap that up, that's gonna accelerate the cane from zero to 100 miles an hour plus, right up into the middle of their legs. Now, you can imagine what exactly I'm talking about. I want you to think about lifting them off the ground with this strike for self-defense. This is number four of the five moves self-defense everyone should know using a walking cane for self-defense. So cane self-defense. This cane, cane master's cane, when used in cane self-defense, is extremely effective on this next technique. And the person who showed this to me is the man who owns cane masters himself, Keith Melton. Master Keith Melton showed me this next technique. I had never even thought about it, hadn't seen it. Seen it. He had me hold a cane like this as hard as I can. He almost broke it with, and, and, and this shouldn't, it doesn't really matter, but he's 70 plus years old, maybe 73, 74. Sorry if, if I get you too old or I got you too young, but he is. Oh, welcome, Ken, Kim Green. Kim Green just joined as a member. Kim, I appreciate that so much. That really helps me keep this going. That's gonna make, take me to the next step, which is that we're gonna make this more of a business. This virtual dojo is gonna become more, uh, it's gonna become half of everything I do during the day because I like, I like this format. I like training with you and I like this idea that we can be all spread out and still doing the same thing. We all have the same interest. So from here, he brought this cane up so fast and you can see, I could feel power coming up if it hits between the legs or if it came up and hit under the chin or if I'm reaching in, I'm trying to grab, I'm trying to punch and he snaps that thing up. It's just very effective. So that's the fourth of the five moves of self-defense. Everyone should know using a walking cane for self-defense. In this uh, case, cane master's cane is with the crook facing out. I'm going to bring this straight up right in there, right? Now, from here, I wanna show you number five, the fifth move everybody should know out of the five moves everyone should know for self-defense using a cane, in this case, cane master's cane, but cane self-defense, the five moves everyone should know for self-defense using the cane. Uh, thank you, Kim, I really appreciate that. And someone said to me today, you talk a lot, and I said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> if you ever train with me in person, um, and I might make you sweat, I might make you do things you really don't wanna know or do, and I'll give you a hint, the more I talk, the more we're training, the more we're getting done. I sometimes, I have this habit of trying to distract you from thinking about how many repetitions, because I'm all about time under tension. I want you to do it for a certain amount of time, and I don't want you to count in your head and get to 22 and think, oh, I can't do anymore. So I'm gonna talk at you a lot. But when it comes to self-defense, I wanna keep it super simple and super basic. From this position, I'm gonna slide it back up. Remember what I said at the beginning? Spinning like this builds the callus here and the proprioception, the feeling, the spatial awareness so that I can do this. And I wanna show you this fifth move. And by, by no means are these the five only moves you should learn. I'm gonna teach you about 500 different things you can do with a cane. 500 might be an exaggeration. Let's call it 50. I'll teach you 50 moves because I wanna keep it simple. I want 50 of the best moves that are gonna work. But from here, I want you to look at this closely. Think of that hard piece of oak on this Cane Master's self-defense cane. This Cane Master's cane, this piece right here, this bevel, is very hard, and I think of it as an oak tooth. You know, they said George Washington, the first American president, had uh, wooden teeth, right? And I think later they said, no, they were cow's teeth or something, but whatever it was. Let's pretend this is George Washington's cutter right there. And that hard point is gonna dig in to the skin on the bad guy, on your threat. It's gonna dig into the ear. It's gonna come in and take the eyeball out of the face. It's gonna pull the nose straight off the face, rip their lips off. Talk about a wicked 
get that in there and snap that back. Some teeth are gonna come out. Maybe it's in the neck and you're gonna grab some of that tendons and some of the, the, you know, the muscle that keeps the neck upright or coming through the chest. And I'm gonna show from here, I'm gonna just reach in and I'm gonna rip it back. So I want you to reach in and it doesn't matter what you grab, you're just gonna reach it back. And you can go on either side and you can support it by putting the other hand on, putting the other hand on and rip it back, rip it back, rip it back. So if you look here, good, Eli says the best cane you ever bought. I'm assuming it's Cane Masters cane. They are. You get one of these canes and you can see the link below what they cost. They're not that expensive. They last forever and they're made. Keith Melton makes these in a really special way. Um, Brandon, if you're asking me what year I was born, I was born in 1971. My first car was a 1971 Mustang. And uh, I, I was, someone asked me what color was it? And I always say rust. It was rust, gray, and Bondo. You know what Bondo is. It didn't, it didn't, it wasn't a great car. It was a great looking car at one time when it was new, but when I got it, it was all beat up and ratty. But it was fun to think about having a 71 Mustang. Mustang Mach 1, that's what it was called. But you're gonna reach up, stick that in there, and snap it back. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim says she got the cane from my site. It's the links below. I reach in, and I'm just gonna pull for self-defense. He said, hey, back up, I have every uh, right to defend myself. You can do a straight thrust, you can do a hooking punch, or you can just reach out and pull. Reach out and pull. And that's the fifth of the five moves, self-defense. Everyone should know using a basic cane like this Cane Masters Cane, self-defense cane. But let me show you a couple other things. Since we got through all five, I'm gonna go back to the basic spin. I wanna start over again. And I'm just spinning. The reason I'm spinning is not for self-defense. It's to warm up, it's to build strength, speed, power, coordination. I bring it across the body and back. This is gonna build your core muscle strength. This is gonna make you much better when you start to do the five moves of self-defense everyone should know using a walking cane for self-defense. And then I want you to start to add some of these squatting motions. Now see how this is me standing up and down. I'm gonna put the cane at an angle in front of my body. I'm gonna push my hips back, down and up, and it's a very small motion. If you are older, if you haven't um, been in the great, greatest shape for that long, start slowly and push yourself down and up. Make small moves. Get the blood flowing, get the plasma into the joints, start to heal everything, increase your mobility, your ability to move, increase your flexibility, increase your strength, and increase your endurance. If you want to be great with the five moves for self-defense, everybody should know using a walking cane for self-defense, you need four basic parts of health. Mobility, flexibility, mobility, that's the ability to get around, move around, flexibility, that's obvious. Um, Strength, you need some strength. Strengthen your core muscles, strengthen your legs, strengthen your arms, your shoulders, your hands, your grip, and you need endurance. You need to be able to last in the fight. The fight's not over until you win when it comes to self-defense. Now, after that, I want you to get back into this first position where the hook is facing behind you. Get into that better position. Practice your thrust. Come to the shoulder. This time, do an angle strike, angle strike. And now I want you to start building some really good, um, I'm going to show you those stances. Info Warrior says, what are some good uh, ready stances to be ready? Let me show you that right now. As we go into this position, I'm going to give myself some distance here. I'm going to bring this up here. One foot's forward, one foot's back. Now, let's say that your mobility is compromised because of an injury or for whatever reason, and you need two canes, one to keep you up and one to fight with. So from here, you can get into that better position and then lean onto that one foot and forward, front, one and back, put the cane up between you and the threat and practice thrust, angle down, angle down. I'll face you. I got my weight on this other cane, thrust, angle down, angle down. I want you to build this striking combination. This is going beyond the five moves for self-defense. Everyone should know with a walking cane for self-defense, these five self-defense cane moves Starting from here, we're gonna do one thrust, angle down, angle down, and then turn your palm and angle up. Bring the palm down and angle up. So it's a downward X coming from your shoulders, 
and then an upward X coming from your hip. So thrust, angle down, angle down, angle up, angle up, then two horizontal strikes. When you're coming across the body, this is the right hand from the right to the left, palm facing up, turn your hand over, palm faces down, and it comes this way. And the reason that your palm is facing up here and your palm is facing up here is when you run into their body and your hand's in the wrong position, it's gonna strip it out. So you're gonna turn your palm up here and it runs into the body, it's not coming out of your hand. So let's do those first basic strikes. From here, this is going beyond the five moves. Everyone should know for self-defense, using a walking cane for self-defense, you have a thrust, angle down, angle down, notice your hand is up, angle up, angle up, coming through, coming through, and then from your shoulder, straight down on top. That's the finishing move right there, hopefully knocking them out for self-defense, ending the fight. Then put it in the other hand, step back with one foot, you asked about what's the ready stance or the ready position. What should your feet do if you know you have to defend yourself? And I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit so we can get closer to the ground. Your feet are just under your body, right? And uh, let me take off this belt. Belt has nothing to do with cane self-defense, right? That belt has nothing to do with it. Cane self-defense is not martial arts. Cane self-defense comes from martial arts. Some of it does. The moves certainly can, but self-defense is self-defense. Martial arts is something else. It can cross over, but when we talk about cane self-defense, we talk about basic principles, situational awareness, getting a better position, and that has to do with your feet. Put one foot back or put one foot forward. Now, whichever foot goes forward or back will depend upon which hand the cane is in. You, basic rule of thumb, if the threat is here, I'm going to step back so I can put the cane between me and the threat. The purpose, the reason I want you to step back is so that you're a smaller target. Now, see how I'm pretty wide here? I'm a wide person. And I step here, I'm a smaller target. Look at it with the cane. I have the cane here. Now, I've increased the distance away from you. I take my vital points away by stepping back. So, if I'm here, I step back. I put the cane between me and you. The other way you can do that is stepping in, but just remember, whichever hand holds the cane, that foot needs to be the leading foot. So if you're stepping in, step in with that. If you're stepping back, step back with the other foot. From here, thrust, shoulder, angle down, shoulder. Always touch the shoulder, angle down, build good habits. From the hip up, angle up, coming through, back the other way, back to the shoulder, and straight down. Put it in the other hand, do that again. This is my right hand, right foot's between me and the threat. Smaller target, thrust, angle down, angle down, angle up, angle up, always other hand up, come through, come back from the shoulder, straight down, put it in the other hand, left foot, step back with the right, keep this foot between you and the threat. This cane, uh, Juan Ortiz says, where can I buy that cane? It's the first link below. Go to the first link and you will see exactly how much it costs what shipping is and all that. It's not an expensive, expensive option. There will also be some other options on that page. From here, thrust. From here, angle down, angle down, angle up, angle up. Bring it through, bring it back, and bring it down. That's the first uh, series or combination of strikes I want you to practice. Now, are you going to use those in the self-defense fight? I don't know, but you'll have practiced them. You'll be very strong. The basic rule how you decide what technique you're gonna use when you defend yourself. It starts with situational awareness. Pay attention to what's happening right now. And like I said before, if you watched the earlier um, stream today, I said if you need to use your phone while you're out and about and you're walking with your cane and you're looking like this, you become an instant target. So if you have to, keep, the, keep it in your phone and if you have to use it, put your back against the wall, hold it out here and use it like this. That way you can see what's coming around you. You can make sure you're still safe. And when you're ready to move again, put it back in your pocket and walk. That's just the basic rule of thumb. But not everybody says that. And a lot of people don't do that. You've seen that. You know what I'm talking about. Number two, I want you to turn your cane out. Remember, we talked about snapping that up between their legs. That was one of the five moves for self-defense. Everyone should know using a walking cane for self-defense. You're going to, from this position... We're going to build combinations again. Oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, 
let's do another set because I want you to do this workout with me. Put this between you and the floor. Remember that angle and go down and up in just a little at a time. Just a little at a time. Get the blood flowing. Build power in your legs. All of the techniques that you use for self-defense are coming through the floor from your feet and up. Go up and down. And if you happen to be um, in, a, in a wheelchair, you can't use your legs as well, then don't do it. But do what you can do. Do what you can do and you'll be able to do more. The more you do, the more you can do. From here, snap it up between their legs. Grab it, step, and thrust. And I want you to go think about just from the front to the back, right? If it's their nose, eyes, mouth, ears, or not the ears, throat, solar plexus, boom, straight through. We were doing uh, some, some sparring, some fighting in one of the teen classes just before I did this. And the one boy, and he was good. He was good about admitting it. The other kid said, oh, I'm so sorry. And I have a rule about that. It's a fight. We're not here to apologize, right? Save your apology for the big stuff. But the other kid, he immediately felt bad because the kid's sitting there, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And he really couldn't. <laughs> and I told him, I said, look, been there many times. What you're experiencing has got the wind knocked out of you. And he's like, I walked into his foot. And he did. And bam! It was just a basic, simple kick, right? I think it was a back kick, maybe. But he hit him so hard in the solar plexus. And there's that diaphragm muscle. And when you breathe, it goes down and relaxes. When you breathe in, when you breathe out, it's a muscle, though. That's how we breathe. We breathe with the muscles here. There's some intercostals that help breathe. But it's mostly that big, thick diaphragm muscle. And when you hit someone right there, boom, in that solar plexus, it puts everything into a spasm, which means it just becomes a tight knot of muscle and it will not let go for a few seconds. And that's where people think they're dying. I can't breathe. I can't. And they really can't breathe. And you can't, you can't use your mental powers to overcome it. You really can't breathe. And if you've never experienced it before, you're freaking out because you're like, is this when I'm going to die? And he even admitted, I said, you think you're going to die for a minute? He said, I did. And I said, I know, I was there. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just helping you understand that it's a normal process. Once in a while, you're going to get hit there. But if it's self-defense, you hit him there and you thrust there and you're defending yourself. You have every right to defend yourself. Then the cops come and scoop them up and they're holding their back. Oh, can't breathe. It's very effective is my point. So from here, we're going to snatch them up between the legs for self-defense, thrust here. And then from this position, I'm going to bring this back to my shoulder and come down at that angle. And I'm thinking temple. I'm thinking operating system. I'm thinking about lights out for self-defense. So in this combination with the crook facing out, I'm going to snap it up, drive through the middle, pull to the shoulder, turning my whole body to create maximum power coming down and striking. Now notice that my feet, talking about what do your feet do when you have to defend yourself, I'm either stepping forward or I'm stepping back. That first self-defense move, let me move this guy out of the way. That first, that's a snap up under between the legs and then thrust from there and then boom, straight through knockout strike for self-defense. That's the second combination. I always want you to do it on both sides. Having the other hand here, snapping up between the legs, thrust through the middle and Oh, wrong side, bring it down here. And that's why I want you to practice both sides. It's instinctive on one side. If you're not ambidextrous, if you haven't been doing it for a million years, it's not instinctive on the other side. Even I still get myself caught in the woods. So from here, from here, and then boom, straight through, and then the other side. One, two, pulling back, three. Other side, one, two, three. And again, that might not be what you do. When you're learning the five moves for self-defense everyone should know walking cane self-defense you have to practice lots of different techniques but then when you defend yourself you have to use principles that brings me to the third principle of self-defense first is situational awareness what's happening second get in a better position put the cane between you and the threat third ask yourself with a breath what targets can you remove or destroy either temporarily eyesight Ability to breeze through their nose, through their teeth, through their mouth, because there's so much blood, mucus, snot coming out. And you broke their nose, they can't see, their ears are ringing, maybe you box their ears, or permanently through the throat for self-defense only. This is self-defense, this is not dancing, this is not 
uh, this is not fighting. It's not a competition. It's life or death. It's, it's your, your right to defend yourself. Maybe you have to be your own first responder. Another incident yesterday, maybe New York, I think it was, and the older um, Asian American man, I think Filipino this time, Pacific Islander, minding his own business, guy comes up, assaults him, knocks him to the ground, starts to try to kick him to death by kicking him in the head. We keep seeing story like this over and over and over. And it reminds me of going back a few weeks, the Asian American woman, Chinese woman in uh, San Francisco, same scenario. One of these guys who had been let out of prison so he wouldn't get COVID or let out of prison because they have a no cash bail in those cities. And he's just a homeless thug going around hitting people, hitting people, hitting people. And he comes up to this elderly, I think 64 to 69 years old Chinese woman, hits her in the head. And she says, I, I'm asking myself, well, who would do that? What's wrong with you? Then I picked up a stick and I beat him until the cops came and took him away. And they have video of this stuff. And I thought, yeah, David says, Perry, Buttstroke, Slush, he's talking about basic stuff we learned in the military, right? Thrusting is always gonna be most effective. Butt, butt stroke, right? Bayonet attack. And then pushing like this, which is the next move that we're gonna talk about. But the point is, this woman in, a, in San Francisco, the Chinese American woman, minding her own business, had to become her own first responder. The guy hits her, who knows, is, is she gonna be the next guy, that, or next woman that gets knocked to the ground and st stomped half to death or stomped to death? No, she picks up a stick. This is a stick. That's why I like stick for self-defense. And she took matters into her own hands. Now, am I saying be a vigilante? No, but that's not vigilanteism, that's self-defense. Don't hit me again. And she defended herself. And I'm saying for you, it's your right for self-defense. It's your right to defend yourself. It's a human right. And then if you're carrying something like this, you now have a force multiplier, but it's also, it's a necessary medical device for a lot of people. The law can't tell you you're not allowed to carry it. You, uh, they can't make you prove that you need it. It's your choice if you decide that you need to mobile it or get around with, I always keep saying mobile aid, I don't even know what this word. You need to be more mobile, you need to be able to walk around with a walking cane. I've had this pain in my knee and in my hip going on four months now, and I'm figuring it out. It's weak glutes, I've been working on my glutes. But if I feel more comfortable, I'm allowed to carry this, or even if I don't need it, I'm allowed to carry it. Um, yeah, oh, what makes the grass grow greener? Yes, I get that reference from uh, boot camp. Boot camp is where most of us who were in the military, especially like the Marine Corps or the Army, learned how to fight with the rifle. Attach bayonets. We're out of bullets for self-defense. Well, it's not self-defense there. You know what I'm talking about. But for us, for self-defense purposes, all those techniques work, and they've been proven, sadly enough, through, um, through, uh, through war, right? We've had people, there have been plenty of occasions over the last thousands of years of people hurting each other. Semper Fi, thank you. LTO, the bull, whew, says uh, Semper Fi, Semper Fidelis. I had occasion, I was fortunate enough to have lunch with uh, a very famous Marine, um, famous and infamous. Worked in the Reagan administration, and I think he's on Fox News now. Trying to, try to think of his name, I don't know why his name's not popping in my head. Um, anyway, he had written a book, and I got to sit and have lunch across from him, and as I was leaving, he shook my hand, and he held it a little too long, and I said, Semper Fi, and he said, Semper Fidelis, and I always, that always stuck with me, like, you know, he's more legit. He was, you know, Vietnam, high-ranking officer. And yeah, Oliver North, Colonel Oliver North. We got to sit down, and uh, I was invited, my mutual friends, to sit, and I got to sit, and listen, he was, we were in Cincinnati, he, we were in Dayton, Ohio, but his, uh, the guy who saved his life, his commander in Vietnam, was, lived in Cincinnati and came up to, sit, to have lunch with all of us, and at the end, Colonel North said to me, uh, son, and I can still remember the tie I was wearing because I dropped some food on it like I often do. And, and, I was, and I was embarrassed. I was like standing like this, trying to cover it up. And he said, son, I'm so sorry that I didn't get to talk to you very much because, you know, I, and I said, please, sir, <laughs> do not apologize to me. I said, I, I, I was blessed to be able to sit here in your presence and listen to you and these, uh, this other uh, war hero, Marine, 
talk about the old days and, and, and you know, how's your family? How's your, you know, how's your kids getting along? And I said, that was a blessing. Please don't, don't apologize to me for anything. Anyways, a highlight, right, as a young man. All right, one more, one more uh, combination. I want you to practice, and it's this position here. Your hands are up. Let's say they've put their hands on you, and I did this last week. I had somebody come in, and this is the other thing I'm going to do. As you guys help me grow this channel, I'm going to find somebody who wants to be in some of these videos with me so I can show you. I'll teach them and have them do it to me, and I'll, and I'll show you with them how it works. Let's say they put their hands on you. Your cane is going to come up, and then it's just it's going to hit those nerves, and you're just going to pull from here straight in and down. It's two directions. It's not in here because if their hands are here, it's just going to come over it. It's in and down. So you're going to pull in and down. I want you to practice that. From here, this is step one. I'll show you from the side. Two, in and down, and then step and thrust. And this bar of oak is going right through their face, eyes, nose, mouth, or their neck for self-defense. So from here, they put their hands on you, they're grabbing, they're choking, they're trying to stab, they're getting ready to punch you, one hand's there, you bring this over, put it between the two of you, snap them in, their hands are literally gonna be from here, they're gonna go down like this. And I did this uh, with several people last week in class, I'll do it again this week with the people I have who are coming in because it's so effective. And one of them said to me, because I, ha- I was putting my hands on them, and I said, go ahead and do it. And I said, no, you got to do it a little harder. Do it a little harder. I said, I can take it. Do it a little harder. And then I had him doing it really fast and hard. And I was, you know, was po- my eyes were popping out. And he said to me, he said, well, I want to feel it. I want to feel it. And I know what he's thinking. He's thinking he's faking me a little bit. He's just doing it. He's, you know, he's doing it for show. And I said, no, go ahead. Let me put my hands on you. And you snatch that down. And boom, he did one of these things. And I, I didn't snatch him that hard, but he's like, oh, I can see where that would be very effective. And I said, yeah, exactly, right? But you just snatch it down and push straight in. Now, from here, I want you to add a side strike and a side strike and step back. Look and strike, step back. Always look, strike. So again, from here, final combination of the five moves everybody should know for self-defense, using a walking cane for self-defense. Up, pull it over, snatch it down. Step in and thrust through their face. Pull it back in. Go one side. Notice that I'm moving my body. And then look. Go back and look and go back. Now, that's a mobility drill. That's going to help you have better mobility. We want, we want four things. We want mobility, flexibility, strength, and endurance. One last time. You can put it in the other hand. Your hands are up. They're this close. They're in your face. Just rake that down across their face. Pull the hands in step and thrust, and again, you don't have to be super strong. You don't have to be stronger than them. Let the oak against their nose do the work. That doesn't have to be a hard strike. Just right into the face, right into the neck. Pushing, and then practice side, side, step back, step back. You guys have been so awesome. I'm gonna do this again. Please, if you haven't joined already, or if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Send me your comments. You guys. When we talk like this, it really helped me to understand what we want to do next, right? What you want to do, I want to do. Send me emails, pasquinelli at hotmail.com, uh, info at quantumstrong.com, or go to my website, the contact me box, pasquinelli.com. While you're there, if you happen to look around and take, watch some videos or whatever, that helps me too. But let's grow this. Let me get some more people in here so that I can turn this into our virtual dojo. And any question, any requests, any things that you want to do, just send them to me. Check the links below. If you're interested in seeing what these cost or getting one for yourself, if you haven't already, then just take a look and see what. And then if you have a question, reach out to me and let me know how else I can be of value to you. You guys have been amazing value to me, and I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.